How's it going, vinyl community? Hope everyone's doing well, looking after themselves. At last, I'm back with a collection update. Um, I don't buy a lot in um, January and February. They're quite expensive months for me, so I don't tend to buy a lot of those uh, first couple of months of the year. Um, so, yeah, I haven't really bought anything since Christmas. So, um, I bought quite a lot of stuff, actually. Um, there's still more to come. It's not arrived yet. So, um, I'll be doing a part two of this next week rather than save it all up for one video because that video will go on for bloody ever otherwise. Uh, the usual mix of uh, styles and genres, uh, CDs and records. Uh, as always, stop the CDs first. First up today is Inglorious. Showed this band before. This is We Will Ride. Uh, if you're not familiar with Inglorious, um, similar to, I think, sort of late 70s, early 80s, White Snake. Um, free bad company, basically sort of old school hard rock. Um, but these guys have only been around about sort of five or six years. Fourth album. Uh, other than the lead singer, this is a completely new lineup. Uh, was gutted that the old lineup was gone. But um, whacked this in the car just on Friday, and, and the, the new lineup's doing all good. This is a great album. Really, really enjoying it. Um, the singer Nathan James actually appeared on The Voice. Uh, and he didn't get through. Just goes to show what they bloody know, eh? Um, but this is really good stuff. If you're into the old school hard rock, uh, check out Inglorious. Like I say, they're a fairly new band. Uh, some really nice riffs on this. Good vocal melodies. Uh, Nathan definitely knows how to uh, come up with good vocal melodies. Some good choruses. A good hard rock album. Definitely check out if you're not familiar. That's uh, Inglorious with We Will Ride. I think this came out last year. No, it's actually this year. So yeah, good start there. On to an album now I've been meaning to pick up for absolutely years. Um, kept, I've got some of the albums from this band, but um, not got any of the old stuff. So I've been meaning to grab it for a long time and never got around to it. And it was recently shown by Liam, the Death Doom Metalhead. So I decided to finally get off my arse and actually grab it. Cryptopsy is none so vile uh, from 1996, if my memory's right. Uh, Cryptopsy from Quebec in Canada. Technical death metal, uh, really nasty, brilliant stuff. This uh, album lasts just over half an hour and it's job done, and sometimes that's the way I like albums. Um, some albums I feel drag their feet a little bit. Not the case here. Brilliant stuff. Sometimes when I listen to death metal, I want to listen to something that really challenges me. And this really challenges the listener. Um, fast, uh, insanely fast drumming. Very technical drumming from Flo. Uh, can't remember his surname off the top of my head, but he's um, well respected in the, the extreme sort of metal drumming world. Um, brilliant riffs, really technical, sort of uh, crazy stuff. Uh, time changes uh, left, right and centre. Cultural vocals that you can't understand any of, which is just how I like it. Um, from Lord Worm, he's no longer in the band, but uh, this is an essential technical death metal if you're into this kind of stuff and for some reason like me you haven't grabbed it. I recommend you go out and grab it as soon as possible. There's a CD, this is a reissue. Um, Hammer Heart Records, they do a good job. Uh, brilliant stuff. Cryptopsy's None So Vile from 1996. Glad I finally got off my ass and grabbed this. And uh, need to grab some more of the older stuff as well. Up next, the band from my youth that um, I haven't really listened to for quite a while. Um, I'm really getting back into them now. It's Pearl Jam and Backspacer. Uh, heard this quite... Um, um, sorry, a couple of tracks from um, this album on the, uh, the National Digital Rock Station here in the UK. Uh, so the missus picked me this up for my birthday uh, not long ago. Uh, yeah, really good stuff. I've been listening to this at work a couple of times this week. Gonna see my friend, The Fixer, Just Breathe, Supersonic, Force of Nature at the end. A lot of good stuff in it. I've been sleeping on Pearl Jam for ages. I think the last album that I really listened to was Yield back in 1998. Uh, 
just like a picture card sleeve. Uh, that's the outer card. Yeah, it's made me realise I really need to get off my arse and grab more of their stuff. Um, I listened to them so much back in the early 90s. Uh, obviously, the debut album, 10, the follow-up verses. Absolutely love those two albums. I'm glad to be finally getting some more Pearl Jam in the collection. Eddie Vedder still sounded fantastic. That's Backspacer from, uh, I think it's 2009. And while I grabbed that, I grabbed the latest album. I think this is called Gigatron. Yep. I haven't actually listened to this yet. Uh, I picked up so much stuff, obviously. I have not managed to listen to all of it. But again, a couple of tracks from this were played on um, Planet Rock. And I really, really enjoy them. Uh, quite a big booklet here. With all sorts in. But yeah, not listened to it yet, so I can't give too much of an opinion. But the two tracks I heard that were played on the radio, really, really enjoyed. So definitely going to give this a listen this week. Already whacked it on the iPod, so I'll be listening to that while I'm out and about at work this week. Uh, more bluesy hard rock, Tyler Bryan and the Shakedown. This is Pressure. Listen to this this week. Great stuff. Uh, another kind of newish band. Old school hard rock, bluesy hard rock. If you're into that stuff, definitely check these guys out. Uh, this is their third album theirs I've got, and it's just as good as the other two. Title track's really, really good. Hitchhiker, Backbone, Automatic, Misery, Fuel, Loner. Up-tempo stuff, some more chilled out ballady stuff. Uh, bluesy, really, really nice bluesy guitar, I should say. Uh, good stuff. I uh, need to give it a few more listens. Uh, listen to it twice on uh, Thursday, I think it was. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're looking for some new bands to check out, you should definitely be checking these guys out. Uh, really good stuff. Tyler Bryant and The Shakedown, The Pressure. And this is from... Then I can't see. Right, it's too bloody small. Uh, up next, something that everyone was showing when it was released back in January. Uh, except Too Mean to Die. Uh, I've only listened to the first couple of songs so far. Um, again, it's just been put on your iPod, so I'll be taking it out to work for me this week. Um, so I can't say too much about it. What I will say, though, is Except is uh, definitely one of those bands that isn't um, living off of past glories from 30... 35 years ago now. Um, I'm missing Stalingrad, but every album they've released with Mark Tonello um, since he joined the band has been really, really good. None of them are bad. Blood of Nations is great. Um, Blind Rage is really good. Uh, the Rise of Chaos is good, and everyone's talking about how good this is as well. So, um, yeah, looking forward to giving this a listen. Um, a really good band. Old school heavy metal. I'm sure you know who they are. Um, but, yeah. Can't say too much about it because I've not listened to it yet, but really, really good stuff uh, I'm hearing. So, yeah, looking forward to giving it a listen. On to some death metal now and uh, Six Feet Unders, Nightmares of the Decomposed. Um, yeah, I mean, let's get the obvious out of the way. Chris Barnes' voice is just not what it was at all. Uh, back in the early to mid-90s, his time with Cannibal Corpse, for me, he was my favourite death metal vocalist. He just got so low. But his voice is just ruined now. Um, but I still like uh, what he is doing. I mean, it's not as good as he, what he was doing. But his voice is still okay. Just don't expect what you expected back in the day. Uh, Jack Owen back in uh, back working with Chris Barnes now. He's in the band after he left Deicide. He's wrote all the music on this. So obviously good guitarists here. I uh, can't remember the other guys in the band. Listened to this just this morning. Um, some really good songs on it, actually. I won't lie, it was slightly better than I thought it was going to be. Amputated, the first track's great. Zodiac's really good. The Rotting's great. Death Will Follow. Self-Imposed Death Sentence. Uh, Dead Girls Don't Scream. Brilliant track. Really, really good stuff. Uh, yeah, some of what Barnes does is slightly laughable with the vocals. Uh, but on the whole, I really, really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, just don't expect uh, any of the uh, sort of the Chris Barnes era vocals from back in the day because you simply will not be getting it. But this album's actually really good. Um, glad I've really, really, really glad I picked it up, I should say. That's Nightmares of the Decomposed, and I think they came out last year. From Six Feet Under, mid paced death metal, nothing too fast and technical. 
check it out if you haven't. Uh, three more CDs left. Uh, some black metal now. Satirical on the Age of Nero. Not heard this one yet. But I remember getting a um, CD through with Metal Hammer back in about 2008. And uh, it's got the second song, The Wolf Pack, on it. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, such a good song. But I never got around to picking up the album. I did actually order this off of uh, Music Magpie a while ago from eBay. And it never turned up. Sent them a, a message and I just got a refund. So I don't know what happened there. Um, this isn't really, really harsh blackmail. Like your sort of early uh, Immortal albums or Emperor albums. Um, but I really like it. Yeah, it's like I say, the truck I know, the Wolf Pack's more of a sort of a death and roll sort of a style. Don't know what the rest of it's like. But looking forward to giving it a listen. It's Tyrical on the Age of Nero from 2008. Another one not listened to yet. Destruction, Born to Perish. Been wanting to grab this for a while. And um, glad I finally have. Uh, one of the uh, original Teutonic German thrash bands from back in the day. Um, yeah, like I say, I can't say much about it because I've not heard it yet. But this has got Randy Black on drums, uh, so I'm really looking forward to listening to it just for that on its own. Um, he played drums on quite a few of Annihilator's albums back in the mid-90s. He's an absolutely phenomenal drummer. So yeah, uh, some Teutonic Thrash. Looking forward to giving this a listen, but can't say too much about it, because uh, there's so much to listen to at the moment, just not at the time. And last CD, now I have listened to this. Uh, I've listened to this Friday morning. And it's absolutely superb. It's a contender for album of the year already. However, I give will give one word of caution. It's the new album from Agent Agent Steel, and I didn't even know this was coming out until I saw it on a page that I follow on Facebook saying that the new Agent Steel album is out today. I knew nothing about it. Didn't know John Cyrus was back in the band as well, so that was all good. This is called No Other Gods Before Me. I absolutely love this. Um, I'm not going to lie though. The very first listen, um, I wasn't sure about the vocals. Now, John Cyrus' uh, range is still definitely there. He's not lost any of that high at all. Um, because he's been away for so long, it's almost like he's trying to push himself even further. And some of the vocal uh, patterns in this are incredibly high. And at first, it was almost kind of laughable. But to be honest, by the time I got to track four, I was already used to it. And uh, yeah, it didn't bother me after that. So be warned, first listen, you might think, I'm not sure about this, um, but give it time and um, it'll pay off. And this is an outstanding album. I've got the CD because um, when I went on Amazon, there was no option to, to get the record. So I'm not sure if it's actually being pressed on vinyl. But this is really, really good. Speed metal, Cyrus sounds great. Agent Steel from California. Brilliant stuff. I uh, highly recommend you go and grab it, especially if you're a fan of the band. Um, if you're not a fan of the band, I'd recommend uh, listening to a few tracks online first before uh, actually going out and buying it, because um, the vocals are definitely Marmite. You know, you either love them or hate them. That's the CDs done. Let's move on to some records. Showed this not long ago, picked up the CD, but finally got Pearl Jam's Unplugged. On vinyl, uh, brilliant stuff. Um, I really, really dug a lot of the, uh, the Unplugged sets back in the early 90s, and this is one of the best. And finally got this for a good price. Um, this cost about 28 quid. They go online. They're online for like 75 80, 85, 90 pounds. Just absolutely crazy prices. I don't know who is paying those prices. I'm certainly not. Uh, another birthday present from the missus. But yeah, I found this one uh, on Amazon for just over uh, 25 pounds. So definitely had to grab it. Fantastic set. Polyline in the sleeve with the sticker stuck on the sleeve. And uh, black vinyl with custom labels. Really nice stuff. Brilliant unplugged set. There's not a lot of tracks on this. 
But that's all good to me. I just love it. It's brilliant stuff. And finally, a decent price and not a crazy price. There's the gatefold as well. Absolutely over the moon to add that to the collection at last. Pearl Jam's unplugged. Uh, some more old school bluesy hard rock here. This is the Dead Daisies and uh, I can't remember the title. Holy Ground. Um, well, I love this band. Um, now fronted by Glenn Hughes, formerly of Deep Purple fame. They were fronted by John Karabi, former uh, Motley Crue vocalist, of course. He left and I was really guided, I must say, because his voice just fit this band so well. But fortunately, he's gone. And I was a bit annoyed when I heard that Glenn Hughes was in. And not because I dislike Glenn Hughes. I think he's great. Brilliant vocalist and brilliant bass player. But I just wanted John Karabi. But I have to say, again, I played a couple of tracks on uh, the uh, the digital uh, rock radio station here in the UK. And uh, really, really good stuff. Listen to this just last night. There's a cover on here of uh, 30 Days in the Hole. Can't remember who does it originally. It's okay, but um, Mr. Big did a better cover version of it. But this is packed with really, really good riffs. Um, Doug Aldrich on guitar, formerly of Dio, and White Snake. Uh, that guy knows how to play the guitar. Great riffs, really, really good. Um, this has got Dean. I think his name's Castronovo on drums. He was uh, used to be in Journey, and uh, Ozzy Osbourne. He played in Osmosis. He's no longer in the band anymore either, so I don't know he's playing drums these days. But again, great uh, bluesy hard rock. There's the uh, gatefold, looks fantastic. And as you can probably tell from the cover, uh, printed in the sleeves. Both of these on a really nice purple vinyl. Looks great. Sounds fantastic. Production's really good. Glenn Hughes' vocals are awesome. That guy's voice is not cracking at all. And uh, he's not young anymore. But he's obviously looked after his voice. And he sounds great. Won't bother showing you the second LP. Because um, it's exactly the same as the first one. But really good. Need to give it some more listens, obviously. But if you're into your old school hard rock... You can't go wrong here. Um, brilliant stuff. That's the Dead Daisies. I think this is from last year, or it might be this year. It is this year. Uh, Holy Ground, Dead Daisies. Check it out if you're into the old school hard rock. And speaking of old school hard rock, uh, Thunder and their new album, All the Right Noises. Check this out for a bizarre gatefold. Strange. A good album though. Again, I only listened to it once just last night. Me and Mrs. chilling in on Saturday night, like everyone is these days, let's be honest. A few beers, some takeaway pizza, and just some quality rec records on the turntable. Again, a couple of songs are played on the rock radio station. Really liked them. Listened to it last night. Get that the right way up. Printed in the sleeves. Just black vinyl. Um, blue centre rings on this record. On the same, second record, they're yellow. So I won't bother showing that. There's no point. These guys were part of the last, the last sort of wave of the old school good time hard rock before grunge and alternative came along in the early nineties and completely wiped, wiped all those bands out. Saw these guys live a few years ago and I've still got it. Danny Boy, Danny Bowes even is his name. His voice is fantastic. He has not lost any of his vocal range at all. And this is really good stuff. Really enjoyed it last night. Again, another one that needs more listens, but just bought so much stuff recently. It's uh, not a time to listen to everything uh, multiple times. But yeah, looking forward to giving this another spin. Uh, Thunder, old school hard rock. All the right noises. Good stuff. Another newish band. This is the Dust Coda, and this is Mojo Skyline, isn't it? Yeah, Mojo Skyline. Um, yeah, discovered these on a uh, podcast I used to listen to 
which doesn't seem to be active anymore, which is a shame because they used to just play all sort of um, um, just mostly new bands, to be honest. Sometimes they would put on old bands, but mostly it was new bands. And I discovered these guys through that podcast. There's the back. This is, again, old school hard rock um, with a modern twist, though. These guys don't sound like they're stuck in the past. Um, really nice stuff. Out on earache. Um, sounds really, really good. It's been well produced. Printed in the sleeve. Black vinyl. Um, good old black vinyl. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Listened to it last night. Again, another album that needs more listeners. And I'm repeating myself. I do apologise. Yeah, if you're looking for, uh, again, some new bands to check out, these are definitely worth giving a listen to. It's strange to think that uh, bands like this are on Earache now, because back in the day, Earache literally just dealt with, um, you know, extreme metal, a lot of grindcore, a lot of death metal. But yeah, they definitely branched out to uh, sort of more sort of mainstream bands, but really, really good stuff. Give us a listen if you're looking for some new rock bands to check out. I don't buy many EPs, but Havoc's, uh, is it no time to, no point in no return. Um, this is on sale on Amazon, fairly cheap, so I grabbed it. I absolutely love this band. One of my favourite of the newer thrash bands from the last sort of 10 years, 15 years. Two originals on here, point in no return, from the cradle to the grave. And side B, there's a cover of Sepultura as Arise. Um... And uh, a cup cover of Slayer's Postmortem and Rain in Blood. Nice little piece to add to the collection. Uh, shitty paper sleeves, I need to swap that out. Uh, and, uh, quite, a, quite a nice uh, splatter of vinyl here. Side B looks even better. Custom labels, nice stuff. Uh, the only issue with this, and it's nothing to do with the actual product it's uh, another one another record has turned up from amazon and is really warped yeah, you sit the needle down and it's going like this always seems to be amazon stuff i mean some stuff turns up and it's absolutely fine but some stuff i get from there just i don't know if it's the way they store them or something but they're just so warped i know a lot of people send them back but i just can't be asked at the end of the day it plays it plays okay so that's what matters so yeah, a rare EP, Havoc's Point of No Return. This is a reissue. Um, good stuff. From Death Metal now on my first Ace Fix album. Uh, this is called Necrosis. Something like that. Um, again, one of those bands I've been meaning to check out for a very long time. Never got around to it. Um, and then I found out that the vocalist is Martin Van Drunen, uh, former Pestilence vocalist. And I absolutely love uh, Pestilence. Um, he played bass as well in Pestilence. Um, and so I thought, yeah, I've got, to, uh, got, I've got to grab this. This has been showed recently. Um, I think it was Liam, the Death Doom Metalhead, and uh, Mark G with a C showed it. Giving this about two or three listens. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mid pace death metal, um, so I suppose you could argue it's a bit doomy as well. There's the printed uh, lyric sheet. Nice black vinyl with a uh, custom center rings. Yeah, I like this so much that so I've ordered some more Ace Fix, Ace Fix stuff already. Um, so that'll be coming in next week's update. Um, again, Martin Van Drunen, he's another one. His voice still sounds really, really good. Yeah, really liking this. A band I'm definitely going to be diving deeper into the discography. Ace Fix, is his from uh, last year or is it this year? No, it's this year. Brilliant stuff. Um, I'm going to show something now that I was supposed to show in the last update, but I bloody forgot. Onslaught's Killing Peace from uh, 2004, if my memory's correct. This is a recent reissue. 
This was the first Onslaught album for 15 years. Thrash Metal from uh, Bristol here in the UK, if my memory's right. I'm um, really glad to finally get this on vinyl. This is uh, such a good album. Ever since Onslaught have come back, they have not delivered a bad album at all. Everything's been good. Uh, wipe sticker stuck on there. Poly lined in the sleeves. And this is on clear vinyl. Not going to bother sharing the second record because it's exactly the same as this. Awesome thrash mail. If you haven't, uh, if you've not heard this or you've not listened to Onslaught, I highly recommend you do it. I don't just go for the old stuff because the new stuff is just as good. They're another band like Testament, um, like Death Angel, like Overkill, an old school thrash band that are putting out stuff. That is just as good now as they were putting out back in the day. Um, you've really got to grab it. It's really, really very good. Their most recent album is my favourite album of last year. But fantastic stuff. Uh, yeah, I forgot to bloody show it last time. But there's Onslaught's Killing Peace from 2004. Really, really good thrash metal. Sounds fantastic. Uh, I think this was done on... Um, yep, yeah, Back on Black. Uh, good pressing, sounds fantastic. Go grab it if you've not got it. Uh, last thing now. Some death metal from Texas. Frozen Soul, and this is a Crypt of Ice. I need to thank Cody at Metal Miners for uh, introducing me to these guys. I had no idea who they were at all. Um, and he showed the, these, this album uh, a couple of weeks ago, played a snippet of one of the songs, and I was just all over it as soon as I heard it. I had to make a note of it in my phone uh, to pick it up when I was uh, grabbing stuff. Really, really good stuff. Um, think Realm of Era, uh, Re Realm of Chaos even, Era Bolt Thrower. And this is pretty much what you got here. And just like Bolt Thrower, they've got a female bass player as well. Again, this is um, sort of your mid-paced death metal. Nothing too fast or technical here. Really, really tuned down guitars. The guitars, I need to give that a clean. Uh, remind me of deathcore bands, actually, because they sound like they're tuned so low. Probably tuned down to A or something like that. But yeah, listen to this about three or four times already. This is really good stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks to Cody over at Metal Miners because I was completely unaware of this band and I'm absolutely loving this album. So that's the last thing to show. That is Frozen, Art, Frozen Souls Crypt of Ice. Really, really good mid-paced death metal. Um, if you're not aware of Metal Miners, I highly recommend you go over and check their channel out. They're fairly new to the VC like I am. And I absolutely love their content. They're putting out some great stuff, uh, both Cody and Anthony. Really good. Check them out. Go and give them a sub. I'm going to leave a link in the description below this video. Um, some of you will know who they are, but those of you who don't, I highly recommend going over and checking them out. Really good guys. They make great content. Really likeable fellas. And if it wasn't for them, I would not be aware of this. So uh, that's uh, Frozen Soul. Cryptovice, and uh, make sure you go and check out Metal Miner's channel, because they're really good. Right, guys, that's it for today. Quite a long video, so thank you very much if you stuck with me. Uh, like I say, I'll leave a link below for Metal Miner's channel, so make sure you go and check them out and give them a sub if you're not familiar with them. Cheers to everyone who watches, comments, subscribes, all that good stuff. Very much appreciated. I'll be back next week, part two of um, this update. And I think in a couple of weeks I'm going to do a Nirvana video. Uh, I've got quite a quite a collection of Nirvana records, and um, I'm going to do a quick album ranking as well because I only put out three studio albums, so it's not going to take very long to do the album ranking. And I'll talk about and show other stuff that they released as well, sort of live stuff and best of and bits and pieces like that. Right, guys, cheers for sticking with me. Thank you very much. Look after yourselves. Take care. And I'll see you next week.
See you later.